All right, it's Python on hardware time. Okay, so lots going on this week in the world of Python on hardware. Okay. Um, we have over 256 Circuit Python boards, and to do, and we've passed this a while ago, but mm -hmm. we now have this graphic so um, because we're clever. And uh, that's the, why don't you explain what these uh, letters and numbers mean when I it will. gets to 256. Okay, so the cool thing about CircuitPython is that anyone can contribute a new board. In fact, we have like new boards almost weekly, basically. Um, people can design their own hardware and um, submit support. And uh, they do it automatically and we approve it and merge it in. And then um, we can down, you can download your firmware that's updated automatically for you at circuitpython.org slash downloads. And we recently um, got over 256 boards and 256 is a magical number because it's um, the, ma the maximum number that can fit into an eight bit number, which is how computers store data. And so like kind of when you get over that, you're like, it's a big deal. It's like when humans turn 100, when your software project turns 256, same thing. Um, so we finally got to 256. I think we're actually up to 260 something by now um, with more boards coming in. And uh, it's a good sign of a, of a healthy uh, community because it means people are submitting um, their designs. People are, are trying to add boards. And the most important thing is it's not just Adafruit boards. Um, there's CircuitPython, there's Pimeroni, there's Seed. There's other there's contributors. There's more Adafruit boards. Sorry, there's more boards that aren't Adafruit yes, boards. than by far. Than board, which is like, that's the sign of success, we think. It's just yeah. like, cool, like... Uh, if you're interested in doing electronics and running a business or making hardware and not having to reinvent everything over and over, you can just build on top of CircuitPython. And every time there's an update to CircuitPython, your board gets updated too. Yeah. So anyways, um, CircuitPython 7.2.0 has released Candidate Zero. Is there anything in this release that uh, is super interesting that folks should try um, out? 7, 7 2, 1 rc Sorry, 710RC, whatever. The, the previous version was a little bit of a mistake. So basically, just make sure you've updated to the latest. Uh, there was a little bit of a number confusion. Um, but the most important thing that I think people really dig is that we now have board.stem uh, underscore uh, I2C, which means that um, if you have a board that has a STEM IQT connector and uh, you, know, you want to make sure that your, your I2C sensor is connecting through that, you can now use this like short, happy name and it was also a um, community contribution um, I can't remember the top of my, um, my head who the contributor was um, so check that out and then um, we of course are adding ESP32 S3 and C3 support including BLE more to come with that a lot of cool BLE news coming up soon okay um, I'm gonna save the Winamp thing for my little highlight um, we have a ton of projects one thing I wanted to spotlight is the Python Software Foundation has a couple cool jobs uh, do check that out if you're interested in helping out on how they can deploy accounts in PyPy um, they have a couple roles that open up um, we try to help them out with things um, the projects of the week um, you could see a bunch but the ones that I'm gonna pick this week dun, 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 is a little bit of a reminder, the CircuitPython show will be coming out on March 1st. That's next week. First guest will be Katni. Here is a very cool CircuitPython-based project using Raspberry Pi, CircuitPython. These are blinky eyes that are also disco balls. I wanted to show that. I think I saw these at the Elton yes. John show. Yes. <laughs> And then um, the project I wanted to highlight this week is uh, there's a lot of folks who remember Winamp. Who didn't download all their files from Napster and use Winamp? That's right. A lot of folks did. And uh, just for the one guy out there who uh, doesn't like uh, Winamp now because uh, we're, we're playing around with it with Python, this is a beginner project that we want folks to try out. So it doesn't support everything that Winamp does, not yet. But so, it's a great beginner yeah. project. And so we put this thing on there. We're like, by the way, this is to get you started so you can remake Winamp. You can download the skins. You can convert them. And then you can play M MP3s. And uh, But so, it does have the scrolling text. Yeah. And it does and have so, like, the number going up. Which and is so fun. one of the things that we decide to do often is here's a project that's easy to do that can get folks started. It's, it's, not, um, it's not everything. It's not everything. And it's not a thing that you need to join and you're going to spend your entire life doing, you can get started and play around with it. So uh, Tim Fomiga did a really good job. I want to do a, a hug report and shout out to Tim. Um, but this is really neat because this is kind of exactly what I wanted, which was like, I just want it to look like the 
Winamp player. I want to be able to mess around with some old skins. I want to be able to play MP3s, which I still use, and I want to have that nostalgia, and I want to maybe make like a little physical holder for it so I can make my own music player that all it does is music. It doesn't go online. It doesn't do anything to the music. So that, that was the goal of the project. So Tim's going to uh, explain it in this video. Um, but very cool, and if you're interested, you can uh, check out the guide and then check out the collection of the thousands of skins. You probably had these uh, on your computer in the past, and you can remake those and play your music again. Hello, everyone. In this video, I'll show you my latest project for the Pi Portal. This is a Winamp MP3 player. This runs on the Pi Portal. You can fit loads of MP3 files on the SD card, which is plugged into the back of the Pi Portal. You store your playlist files as JSON right on the CircuitPy drive, uh, so you can add and remove songs from your playlist. You can keep multiple playlists and swap between them uh, simply by editing the files. There are three invisible buttons on the interface of the Pi Portal. The whole top half will pause and resume the music. Right now, my microphone is not capturing the music, but I have just uh, started it to resume, and you can see it's now counting up there. So I can press it again to pause. You can also use the bottom half of the screen to go to the next and previous track. So if I touch in the bottom right, we will advance to the next track. The playlist at the bottom will update. The current track title on the top right will update. And we could resume to hear the second song now. Same thing with the previous button. The uh, Probably the neatest thing about this latest project is that you can actually customize it. So what I have right here is the bass Winamp theme but you can actually browse through hundreds of different Winamp skins on the Winamp Skin Museum. Find the one you want, download it by right-clicking it, and choose Save Image As. Go ahead and save this file, and then you run a conversion script on your PC, copy the resulting files to your CircuitPy drive, and then you just have to change these two variables here in the code Pi to update to your favorite new custom skin. So grab your Pi Portal, load up all your favorite tunes, Thank you for watching. So if you ever want to design your own music player, have something that's not internet connected, just play your music and play around with user interfaces and more, you can do that with Python. And you can take a trip to, um, I forgot the name of the site. Uh, someone could put it in the chat. I think it's like winampskins.org or something. It's the Winamp Skin Museum. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of them. And you just Google Winamp Skin Museum. Yeah. And uh, you can get this newsletter every single week. Over on Adafruit Daily, we have a completely separate site because we don't spam people. We don't harvest emails. We don't have that pop-up thing that comes on a website when you buy something from us. We don't subscribe you to newsletters. Um, so we went above and beyond, and we have a whole separate site. So if you want this newsletter delivered to you, that's where you do it.